family and friends and fellow YouTubers, it's Kim here from Kim's Country Corner. And today I'm at the Hancock Homestead. Um, today is the day where I'm going to make salsa. Unfortunately, my daughter is unable to help me today. Um, her children needed her first and foremost, which I understand children must come first. So I told her that was fine and I would do this myself. Um, she did help with the, a lot of the prepping. She prepped her own uh, eight quart thing of tomatoes and then she prepped the peppers while I prepped the onion and the garlic. So we all did our fair share of the prepping work and uh, now the mixing together will not be that hard and canning is really not that hard. It just It's just time consuming. So uh, the recipe that we will be using is the fresh vegetable salsa recipe out of the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. Highly recommend this book. Okay, so the recipe says that it will make 10 8 ounce jars or 5 pint jars. And uh, we're going to start out by making the pint jars because we have discovered that that is the size we do use the most. And um, I don't, I have I think 12 pint jars and then uh, whatever sauce is left we might do some of the smaller ones. So uh, for one batch of salsa I need seven cups of chopped peeled cored tomatoes which I have right here. Okay so let me show them the tomatoes down inside the blanching pot. All right, so now Karen is going to take the blancher out and she's going to let it drip off for just a few minutes because that is hot, hot water. She doesn't want to drip any of that on her feet or legs. And then she's going to very quickly put it over here into the sink, into the ice water bath. And we might have to just cover. I wasn't sure how full yeah. to fill it. Yeah. All right. Now, do you see anywhere the skins are starting to like come off real easy? I think we left them in long ago. Yeah, I mean, I can feel the the separation under there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So the, now they'll be very easy to peel. Yeah. And um, we'll just pull off chunks. Yes. Of it. Yep. All right. So that's what we're going to be working on now is prepping these tomatoes. Then I pull out the core of there. And that left over. Okay. Alright, and then we're just going to put it into a pan. So, Karen has um, peeled a Better Boy, which is this one here, and Aroma, which is that one there. And as you can tell, the Aroma has a lot more meat and very few seeds or water whereas your better boys are have more water content and uh, more seed and less meat so that's why your romas make a really good paste or salsa however using more than one type of tomato will add more flavor to your salsas so um, so yes, yeah, so that's why we use the Better Boys and the Romas. Okay, so let me read you the recipe that's in the book. This will make five pint jars. You need seven cups of chopped cored peeled tomatoes, two cups of coarsely chopped onion, one cup of green bell peppers, eight jalapeno peppers, three cloves of garlic finely chopped, one can of tomato paste, three-fourths cup of white vinegar, a half a cup of finely chopped cilantro, and one half teaspoon of cumin. Now we have readjusted this recipe slightly uh, from doing last year's salsa. We've learned uh, some of the things that we want to change according to our taste. We don't like it quite as hot, so we're only going to use half the 
jalapeno peppers. Um, last year we felt like it had too strong of a taste of the cilantro, so this year we're cutting that into a half half of the recipe. Um, the ball book really suggests that when you do the recipes, you stick to the recipe. Um, I, having been canned long enough, sort of understand that uh, the main thing they're wanting is that you have that correct balance of acidity. So even though we're not adding all of the jalapeno peppers, we're compensating by adding more of the regular peppers, okay? Your spices aren't quite as important following it to the letter because they do not have anything to do with the acidity level. And that's the most important thing is to keep your acidity, acidity level at the right level so that it will can properly. All right, so step number one says, in a large stainless steel saucepan, combine the tomatoes, the onions, the peppers, the jalapeno peppers, the tomato paste, the vinegar, the um, cilantro, and the cumin. So that is step number one. And then uh, I bring that to a boil over a medium high heat, stirring constantly. And then I will reduce the heat and boil gently, stirring frequently until thickened about 30 more minutes. So let me go ahead and get all those ingredients into the saucepan. And then uh, we will continue with step number one. In the meantime, uh, while I am getting this ready, they suggest that you prepare your canner and your lids and your uh, jars. So I don't know if you can see them, but the jars are over here and they have been washed and prepared. And the lids and the rings are back here in hot water uh, being sanitized. So let me get this mixture put together for you. Um, one thing I suggest is that you lay your book on top of something high so that if you spill some tomato juice or something on the table, it's not getting into your book. All right, so the first thing it calls for is seven cups of chopped, cored, and peeled tomatoes. All right, and here are my tomatoes. And what I have tried to do this year, I wanted to experiment, is I sent it through my blender on chop. And uh, this is what it came out looking like. It's a little bit um, finer tomatoes than what some of you might like. If you like them chunkier, then I would suggest you don't use your blender and uh, chop by hand. Uh, what I did was the, fir the first uh, three cups I sent through the blender and then I went, oh, this is kind of too fine for me. So then the last three cups I chopped. So I sort of have a mixture of both going in here. All right, so there are the tomatoes. Two cups of onion, and I'm pretty sure this is two cups. I think I pre-measured, but I'm going to go ahead and check again. So there's one, yes, and there's two. All right. Um, one cup of chopped green pepper. Well, we're going to do a third of each. So there's a third cup of the red, a third cup of the green, and a third cup of the orange. All right. And then we're going to do four of the jalapeno peppers. This is the this is half of what a jalapeno pepper looks like. We wanted to show that to you. All right. So there's four of the jalapeno peppers. And be careful with the jalapeno 
jalapeno peppers because they're hot. So like right now, I really should be wearing a glove. And since I'm not, I will immediately wash my hands. Okay, and um, then three cloves of garlic. So there is the garlic already pre-chopped. Three-fourths cup of the white vinegar. This is a cup. I'll only fill it, fill it three-fourths of the way full. Okay. One half cup of the chopped cilantro, and I'm only going to be doing a fourth cup. Because we just felt like last year's recipe was just too cilantro tasting and it kind of drowned it out all the rest of the flavors. All right. So the cilantro is going in. And then a half teaspoon of the cumin. Tomato all over me. <laughs> all right. Okay. So let me bring you in for a close-up so that you can see how pretty this pan looks. And there are all of the ingredients in the pan. So now I will mix all these together and put them on the stove to cook for 30 minutes. I will bring it to a boil and cook for 30 minutes. You see the tomatoes, the onion, the green peppers, the red peppers, some of the orange peppers are in there. And then the seasoning. Okay. Yum, yum. I cannot wait. Okay, so the salsa has come to a boil. And so now I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. Okay, friends, so we only have about 30 seconds to go. And this is what the salsa is looking like. I don't know if you can see it because of the steam. Isn't that pretty? All right. All right, we're ready to start canning. Get everything set out here. It's always a good idea to get all of your items set out. Okay, so we are ready to start canning our salsa. Let's look at what step three says. Ladle hot salsa into hot jars, leaving one half inch headspace. Remove air bubbles and adjust headspace if necessary by adding or removing hot salsa. Wipe rim. Center lid on jar, screw band down until resistance is met, and then increase to fingertip tight. All right, so that's the part we're getting ready for. All right, so let's get our first jar going here.
right, I have my little debubbler and my uh, measuring for the head space. And this is going to be my half inch, okay? All right. Doesn't that look yummy? We're going to do a D bubble. And we're going to do a headspace measure. And we need just a little bit more. All right, another, all right, another D bubble. Another measure of the headspace, and it's perfect. Okay, so now we're going to wipe this rim. Because we do not want any residue on there that could cause an improper seal. This little magnet will grab your um, rings from the hot water. Or that's a lid. This little magnet will grab your lids from the hot water and your rings. Okay, you're going to screw on until you meet resistance and then you're going to do fingertip tight with a slight release. There you go. And there is sausage jar number one. All right, let's see how many we get. We're going to put on our funnel. We're going to ladle in our salsa. Alright, then we're going to remove air bubbles. Go all the way around the side, down the middle, push that thing in there. Measure your head space. That's a half inch. I still have a little bit more to go. All right. Another deep bubble. Check head space. Perfect. Wipe off that rim to make sure you get a secure seal. Put on a lid. you meet resistance and then fingertip tip tight. Fingertip tight. There we go. too much, so I'm going to take some of them out. Let's bubble again. Head space is important because if you get it too full, then the tomatoes will push their waves out. 
And if you get it too low, then you're adding extra air space in there that you don't want. So head space is important. So there's jar number five, which is how many they said we should get. But I have found uh, that we always end up getting more than it says. So I'm just going to keep going. That's why I always put in extra jars. But what we're doing is we're ending up with about two more jars than what the book predicts. So, all right, I'm going to stick these in the canner. Um, step number four says place jars in canner ensuring that they are completely covered with water bring to a boil and process um, both the 8 ounce jars and or the pint jars for 20 minutes remove canner lid and wait another five minutes then remove the jars so in goes our first seven jars for 20 minutes And as soon as the timer goes up, I'll come in, remove the lid for five, and then we'll take them out and listen for those pops. So I'll be back. Okay, friends, so I have finished the boiling cooking process and we're ready to remove the jars. And listen for the pops. We were able to get seven. <clears throat> okay, friends. Well, as you can see, I was able to get seven of the pint jars of the salsa made in one batch. And uh, I have another batch to do. Um, and I did a taste test of a little bit that I had left over, and it was really good. So I'm very pleased. I want to say... Thank you to all of my loyal subscribers that have been with me since the very beginning. Um, it's been three years now. And I want to say welcome to all of the new subscribers. I hope you guys keep coming back. And uh, today I want to say a special hello to Simon of uh, Fifty Shades of Green. And to Julie Trader and to Debbie H. Um, and to Cheryl from um, Cheryl's Country Home. Uh, these guys, these four in particular, are really good about leaving comments on every video. And uh, those comments and those likes and those shares, they really help to spread the word about my channel and help keep me going. Um, I don't make much revenue from my YouTube channel, but as they say, every little bit helps. So um, I appreciate all of you that watch 
uh, like, comment, share, and, uh, and watch those commercials. I only put in one commercial at the very beginning because I don't really like commercials either. But if you can watch that one commercial that I put at the beginning all the way through, that really helps. Um, but mostly I do this for the fun. <laughs> so, um, so, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to know more about our homestead and what we do on it, please hit that subscribe button for Kim's Country Corner. And I will talk to you all later. Bye for now.